Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're going to talk uh, about the evolution of the USGI magazine. Uh, as some of you are well aware, the uh, the new M855A1 cartridge has caused a whole s severe issue of problems. Um, everywhere from its pressure to its feeding to its damaging receivers. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to have a video that's going to talk specifically about the M855A1 coming up. Uh, but the magazine's it sort of evolves along with the uh, evolution of the ammunition. You know, you're starting off with the M193 ammunition, then going to the M855, uh, then going to some, you know, some issues for as far as, uh, you know, anti-tilt, uh, and then going to the current issues involving M855A1. Um, so we're going to start with the original 30-round magazine, which really took place around the 70s, um, and those were identified by the black followers. The actual magazine body itself over the last you know 50 years or 60 years or so really has not changed at all um, uh, once it was adopted the, the profile is pretty much uh, the same the changes have been through the uh, evolution of the followers as well as the angle of the feed uh, lips on the magazine so again we're gonna be looking right now at the uh at the original uh, right around 1970s or so uh, that remained in service until uh, the M16A2 uh, was introduced in 1985, identified as a black follower. Now, as you can see, there is this is not an anti-tilt by no means. Back in those days, uh, anti-tilt didn't, didn't exist. Um, these magazines worked quite well with the uh, with the M193 ball, and this was uh, this was actually in service until about 1985 when we switched over to the green follower. Uh, the Green Follower came out of the uh, M16A2 program. Uh, it was also developed by the Marine Corps. And this had to do with the actual change in the ogive or the actual shape uh, of the uh, MA55 projectile. Starting over here, you're going to see uh, the original M193 cartridge. Uh, if you look at the shape of the projectile, um, it's, it's fairly, you know, fairly blunt, I guess I would say. Uh, the actual shape of the projectile is is uh, it's not really sharp by no means then we switch to the middle which is the m855 cartridge now you're gonna see how this projectile comes to a much sharper point um, it, it's far more pointed uh, and this had caused some issues in the in the feeding um, in the, you know in, directly into the chamber so a lot of the modifications were made uh, to the green follower uh, to compensate for that um, due to the shape of the projectile um, this was the reason why we had to have a H buffer instead of a standard uh, because of the fact that due to the speed of the uh, the bolt velocity and the shape of the projectile we had had failures to feed where this projectile tip would actually catch on the uh, barrel extension itself or on the on the uh, upper receiver itself so the changes that were made to cope with the uh, the feeding issue was again the buffer itself uh, switching to a heavier buffer on the opening stroke it closed it uh, slightly decreased the time along the magazine to properly put the uh, cartridge in place for feeding there was a change made to the feed lips to allow the projectile to move upward so it would clear the uh, barrel extension the next iteration comes around 2008 this is known as the tan follower um, this magazine it had some issues from the get-go first of all as you can see the way that the cartridge indexed uh, on the original magazine and the uh, Gen 2 here, it was always on the right. So your, your your cartridge stack started on the left side. Well, this one started on the right side. The problem was, was when this magazine was fully loaded, many soldiers, what they would do is they would feel uh, what side of the uh, what side of the feed lips that the top cartridge was on that would tell you whether the magazine was fully loaded or not. The problem with the tan follower is it was the exact opposite side. So it, it caused some confusion. But the other issue uh, that the newer follower took care of was, like, this one was not anti-tilt either. This one was, the tan follower was. Now we're gonna talk a little story time about the, the issues with the tan follower. Around the 2008 time period, I was working for Colt. Um, I, I had done a lot of work with the military uh, with, with training classes and so forth up until that point. Um, I received a phone call from a, a very close friend of mine at the 10th Mountain Division uh, at Fort Drum, New York. And he was saying that they just got a whole bunch of these new magazines uh, and they were failing in both the M16A2s, A4s, and M4s horribly. Uh, they were having failures to feed. So I got some information from him on what they were. Uh, he told me they were, the, they were the new magazines with the tan followers. 
So, you know, at Colt, we had not seen these yet. Uh, at Colt, we were still producing uh, all of our rifles. Uh, they were shipping out with six of the uh, Gen 2 magazines. So I contacted him and asked him if he would send me a couple of them, uh, which he did. Uh, well, the I took him back to uh, engineering at Colt, and they took a look at them, and they, they, they ran into issues in both the A4s and the M4s. So they had said, basically... Uh, you know, we need more of these magazines to test. I was able to get, uh, which we actually did a trade. Uh, we did a trade for uh, one case of uh, P mags for every uh, every ca you know, every case we could get of, the, of these. So they were glad to get P mags. So they sent us a couple of cases of uh, of these magazines to test. And uh, Colt did some significant significant amount of testing on these and found that there was a major major issue. Um, so the word got back to Picatinny. They had Picatinny guys come up to Colt to do the, uh, the inspections, and those magazines were halted uh, until they could find out what the actual until they could find out what the actual problem was and how to fix it. So uh, this magazine, um, even after it was adopted, it took quite some time before Colt would actually put them with the guns. Uh, they Colt was really under the under this under the the guys, which was correct, that we're not going to put magazines in with our guns if they don't work. So even though this was the adopted magazine, Colt was not putting them in until they received magazines to test to confirm that they worked. So there's a little bit of politics that got involved. We, we had to box up all the ones that we tested, send them back to Fort Drum. Uh, but the problem was caught. So I was never privy to what the actual changes were that, uh, that Picatinny did to the magazines to correct the failures to feed. But say around, I'd say around the 2010 time period, these magazines were fixed. Uh, the problems went away. And throughout my time at Colt, uh, which was the end of 2010, to that point, we were still shipping the, uh, the green followers. We were not shipping the tan followers. So I'm not exactly sure at what point uh, Colt did switch over to these magazines. I am sure that they did. But uh, from 2010 right up into, oh, I would say probably around the 2015-2016 time period, uh, this magazine was to serve. Then came the onset of the M855A1 cartridge. Now, as many of you may or may not be aware, the M855A1 has caused many, many problems in any weapon system it's been put in. Uh, the round is an excellent round, however, we don't have a gun that it's designed for. Uh, the pressures of this uh, cartridge are significantly higher. Uh, your average uh, 55 grain full metal jacket, 62, 62 grain full metal jacket, are between 52 and 55,000 psi. Well, these uh, MA55A1s are around 62, 63,000 psi. Now, the Army's put out some specifications. Um, quite honestly, I don't pay any attention to those specifications due to the fact I do my own testing. And I did a lot of my own laboratory testing to find out exactly what the pressure, you know, the port pressure, what exactly the chamber pressure and all that was so uh, i'm going off of the data that uh the actual data that we had um we're going to be doing a video specifically on that round pretty soon uh, but at this point uh it leads into the new enhanced performance magazine uh, this magazine was designed for only one purpose it was to prevent issues with the uh feeding of the m855a1 cartridge you can see it's identified by its tanning color and also its blue follower the follower is the same uh, anti-tilt follower as the tan follower, just a different color. The major issues um, that make this one different from the other ones is the angle of the feed lips. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a comparison between a magazine loaded up with M855 and a magazine loaded up with M855A1, and you're going to be able to see exactly what the changes are. Now, each of these magazines has two rounds in it. The tan follower has two rounds of M855, and the... Uh, Blue Follower, or the, uh, the Enhanced Performance Magazine, has the M855A1. What I want you to notice is how high this one sits up, this tip is, versus how high this tip is. This was the main issue. If you look at this tip right here, it's necessary that it sits higher because this projectile is a hardened tungsten steel uh, tip with a very sharp point. What was happening when it was put in the standard magazine was this tip was going into, uh, was ramming right into the uh, the barrel extension and the uh, receiver, upper receiver of the M4s and M16A4s, and it was actually damaging them. Uh, and it would also eat away at the uh, barrel extension on these rifles as well. 
The only way to solve that issue was to have the projectile uh, positioned at a much higher angle so it would in fact go right into the chamber and not uh, touch either the feed lips on the uh, barrel extension or feed ramp on the barrel extension or the receiver. Um, that was the exact reason uh, that this magazine had to come out. You can look at another angle right here. Uh, you can see again how this sits up much higher uh, than this one. So what does that mean? Well, we have hundreds of thousands of magazines that are not compatible with the M855A1 ammunition that are out there. And another issue that this brings up too is NATO compatibility. Well, first off, there's no uh, rifles out there in, in our NATO allies that will hold up to the M855 ammunition as well. That's, that's, that's a given. But even if uh, we were to have to equip any of, our, any of our allies with the M855A1 ammunition, their magazines, which are basically the same format as this is the Stenag uh, magazine right here, this is the new EPM, uh, their magazines are all going to be this profile right here. So they're going to run into the exact same issues that, that uh, the United States did with the MA55A1 ammunition, where they're going to be having issues with the feeding as well. So what does that mean? Well, we've also gone against NATO standardization by going to a new round. The new round is not compatible with our NATO allies' uh, rifles. And we have a, now a new magazine that's not compatible with uh, our NATO allies as well. So we've sort of completely, uh, I guess, ignored our own uh, NATO specifications. So that, that, that's an issue. Uh, the ammunition that's currently in use by our other armed forces, for instance, the Marines, uh, the M855, as well as the SOST round, those rounds are fine in any of the magazines that are being in use. Uh, our SOCOM guys, uh, their Mark 262 and, and their specialty ammunition is all compatible with the standard magazine. This magazine is specifically designed for the unique problems that the uh, M855A1 uh, poses. Now, as of this date, there is yet one more uh, magazine update uh, that I'm actually very happy to, to, to tell you about, if you didn't know already. The Marine Corps has now adopted the Gen 3 PMAG uh, as their standard magazine. Uh, it's a flat, dark earth uh, version, uh, as opposed to the, the Coyote Tan that they've, they've had in the past. Now, that magazine will also function properly with the, M4, uh, with the M855A1 ammunition. Uh, that is the only other magazine other than the Enhanced Performance magazine that does not have the issues uh, of feeding. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one of those to show you today because those are still very, very rare uh, in the commercial ends. Um, Magpul is now selling, and those are all going directly to the Marine Corps. Now, the Enhanced Performance magazines are being issued, uh, but they are not prevalent yet. Uh, they're very hard to come by. This magazine was provided by one of my viewers, which I'm obviously not going to give his name, but... Uh, I do want to tell this gentleman that I am extremely grateful for him being able to provide me with one of those. I've been wanting to talk about uh, these, you know, the GI Magazine Evolution for quite some time, but uh, I couldn't do it without one of these EPM magazines. So this gentleman knows who he is, and I just want to thank him uh, so much. And I'm sure all these viewers are going to thank him, or will be thanking him as well, because uh, I'm able to provide you with all this uh, new information, which uh, many of you are not aware of. Um, so for as far as the availability of the enhanced performance magazines in the commercial market, uh, if you got them, uh, they're, they're hot. Uh, there's, they're, these are not for sale uh, in any commercial entities. Um, same thing going with the uh, Gen 3. Uh, you will not find a commercial sale of uh, the tan follower. Now, you will find some manufacturers who will have the exact same follower in a different color. Uh, I actually happen to have one of those here. And that happens to be manufactured by uh, ASC, um, as you can see. It is the same kind of a follower, just with a different color. Um, I don't know if this was just a reverse engineered one or what it was. We know that it's not the original one because the original one, that data is owned by the U.S. military, and, and they couldn't they couldn't do that with uh, without authorization, which is how a lot of these magazines go. Um, you know, the uh, majority of the, manuf the man magazines are manufactured for the U.S. government by OK Industries. Uh, they always have been, and they have, and they probably always will be. However, Brownells, on the other hand, has come out to be another uh, truly large supplier of magazines to the U.S. government. They are making uh, the Gen 3s, or the Gen 3s, which I am I'm aware of, and I do believe they are probably one of the ones making the uh, the Gen 4s as well. But uh, I expect it's going to be quite some time before we see any of these uh, Gen 3 or Gen 4s uh, in the commercial arena. And the reality is, though, people, um, unless you're shooting M855A1, uh, 
there is no reason for this magazine. Uh, this magazine was desi designed for one purpose, for with one cartridge, and I don't see the M855 am ammunition ever being available on a large scale like the M855. In fact, I got a feeling that uh, ATF, once they get a hold of this ammunition uh, and start seeing it become more commercially available, they're probably gonna go after it for armor piercing. Uh, now, is it armor piercing? No. Um, but as we're going to talk about in the next video, you're going to see that its performance is vastly superior to the M855 uh, in penetration. However, um, it does not compare to the M995 full armor piercing round. Uh, we shot a piece of steel with that, and uh, again, when we get to that video, you'll be able to see that uh, it doesn't function as a full armor piercing round, but it... Uh, I would definitely say at least a 50% improvement in, in hard, hard steel penetration over the uh, standard M855. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is some uh, rather new information that, uh, again, many of you may not be uh, aware of. You know, keeping track of the way the U.S. government does things is, a very, is always very interesting. Uh, it's always even more interesting to see how they violate the same rules that they create, uh, such as the NATO standardization packs, uh, and how they will go against it. Um, I think that's a problem. The M855A1 has enough problems of its own within the U.S. military. Um, as of this moment, nobody uses it but the Army. The Marine Corps re refuses to use it. Uh, the Air Force refuses to use it. The Navy refuses to use it. And uh, SOCOM refuses to use it. So uh, at, this, at this point, uh, there's enough infighting within the U.S. military alone on it. Uh, not to mention what's going to happen uh, later on when we start talking about the, uh, the NATO standardization. Uh, once this ammunition gets in the hands of uh, some of our NATO allies and they start seeing it's destroying guns as well as it's, uh, it's, it's having feeding issues, uh, that's a problem that uh, has yet to come, but uh, you can rest assured uh, it's going to. I do thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please click like. Uh, please subscribe and even better share. Thank you.